This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 13 of season 2 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, March 27, 1909. I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford a century ago. March 27th begins with the About Town section. At a meeting of the assessors Tuesday evening to organize for the year, J. Willard Fletcher was chosen chairman, Charles D. Colburn secretary. At a meeting of the selectmen Wednesday evening for the purpose of drawing two jurymen, Alan C. Sargent and Frank A. A. Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, were drawn. Sunday, March 14th, Reverend Bailey delivered an eloquent sermon from the text, Freely Ye Have Received, Freely Give Ye, give ye from um, Matthew verse 10, or chapter 10, verse 8. That day being the 48th anniversary of his ordination to the ministry, his life has been one of freely give for all good things. He was the pastor at the Unitarian Church, what we know as the First Parish Church in Westford Center. At a meeting of the selectmen last week, Friday evening, Oscar R. Spaulding was chosen chairman, Edward M. Abbott, secretary. Fred A. Snow has been coaxed out of the jury box in Chelmsford to look after the law and facts as related in the Superior Court soon to sit. Eben W. Talent died at his home on the Stony Brook Road early Monday morning after an illness of less than 24 hours of pneumonia. Although for a week he had been carefully guarding a cold, yet all indications of any serious results had apparently passed away, and the sudden relapse in his condition and his inability to rally was a surprise to all. Although Dr. Wells was summoned in the very early hours of the morning, yet all that exceptional skill could do was unable to rally him, and he died within an hour. Mr. Talent was born in Manchester, New Hampshire, January 2nd, 1837, and was therefore a little past 72 years. There's quite a long obituary about him, but I'll, I'll just read parts of it. In 1890, he purchased a farm in Westford, which he has quietly carried on. He was decidedly musical in his taste and was organist in the years gone by in several churches in Lowell and was prominent as a singer in the choirs. He was a member of Oberlin Lodge, the International Order of Odd Fellows of Lowell, of which he was organist. He was also a veteran of the Civil War, enlisting with Company F, the 1st New Hampshire Regiment. In his prime, he was tall and graceful in form and manner. In his declining years, home quietness increased her compensations. With this reward, he cultivated the virtues of a quiet, useful citizen, neighbor, and friend. I believe that was written by Samuel Taylor. The next section is the Westford Center section. At the special midweek Lenten service last week, Reverend A. A. Bronsden of Shirley was the speaker of the evening, giving his hearers a thoughtful and helpful discourse. At this service, and again Sunday evening, Houghton G. Osgood conducted one of his good praise services from the Alexander Songbook. He has the, f the faculty of rallying the good singers to his aid, in view of the fact that as superintendent of the Sunday school and living a good distance from the church, with not over-robust health, this service for the success of the meetings is sincerely appreciated. I believe he lived in the vicinity of uh, Chamberlain Corner, uh, near the west, uh, on, on Main Street, but near the uh, Chelmsford line. Much sympathy is felt for Mr. and Mrs. Oscar Anderson and their little family. In some unaccountable way, Mrs. Anderson contracted measles and was real sick. While not yet recovered, the three children have had them, and little Carl is very sick with pneumonia. Among the teachers who are or have been enjoying the spring vacation at their homes are Mrs. Jenny and Edna Ferguson, Edith Bicknell, and Effie Bennett. Miss Marjorie Seavey is enjoying her vacation as the guest of Mrs. E.J. Meacham at her home in Holyoke. Mrs. Meacham is pleasantly remembered here as Miss Millie Smith, one of the popular teachers at the old Center Primary School. 
The Grangers enjoyed a good meeting at the town hall Thursday evening. Much routine business was transacted. At the lecturer's hour, the Grange Orchestra gave selections and Mrs. Oscar A. Nelson some good recitations. It was town history night. Leonard W. Wheeler gave a talk on the early history of the town, and Samuel L. Taylor discoursed interestingly on the well-known men of the town in the past up to the present time. I imagine that would have been an interesting uh, talk by both men. The, the next uh, section is called Party. Mr. and Mrs. H. V. Hildreth were delightfully successful entertainers at their home on the evening of March 17th, the guests being the ladies of the Thimble Club with their husbands and a few other invited guests. Green, in vivid hue, was the color scheme of the evening. Uh, obviously, it was uh, St. Patrick's Day. The ladies wore white gowns with green girdles and sashes, and some added some touches of the same color to their costumes. The gentlemen could not add so much variety, but green neckties were predominant. The rooms were decorated with shamrocks and carnations, tinted green, but it was in the dining room that the decoration was carried to its most successful climax. Streamers of green were carried from the chandeliers in the center of the ceiling, to the four corners of the room and at points intervening. The centerpiece in the midst of the long white draped table was a mirror simulating a minor, a miniature lake surrounded with greenery in which two tiny green serpents were in evidence. In the center was a mound with green flags. Six tables of progressive whist were enjoyed. The scorecards carried out the same unique scheme of decoration, and each guest received a pretty shamrock ornament as a souvenir. The first lady's prize, a pretty Venetian watercolor framed in gold, was awarded to Mrs. L. W. Wheeler. The first gentleman's prize, a dainty shamrock stick pin, went to J. Herbert Fletcher. The consolation prizes, a candlestick with shade, was awarded to Mrs. Edward Fisher and an enormous clay pipe to Thomas F. Fisher. Refreshments of fruit, punch, salted nuts, olives, and bonbons were served during the evening and ice cream and cake at the conclusion of the game. The ice cream was molded to represent melons in green, white, and pink. During refreshments, some Phonographic selections were enjoyed, concluding with our national anthem, the company rising to their feet and singing the verses with enthusiasm. The guests took their departure at a seasonable hour, voting it one of the best ever of the social events of this congenial group. The next section is the Graniteville section. At 9.45 o'clock Mass in St. Catherine's Church last Sunday morning, the pastor, Reverend Edmund T. Schofield, in the course of his sermon, took occasion to thank the voters of this parish for their material aid in putting Westford back in the no-license column once more, and said that they are to be congratulated for their good work. Mrs. Fred L. Snow has recently returned from a very pleasant visit spent with her daughter, Mrs. L. Y. Clark, in Saranac, New York, and is now stopping at her cottage in North Westford. Miss Zangzen, it's Z-A-N-G-T-Z-E-N, a graduate of the Lowell Normal School, was appointed to take Miss Eva Pine's place in the Cameron School in Forge Village, Miss Pine having been granted a leave of absence for the spring term. Miss Praft of Milton was elected to teach in the William E. Frost School. John R. Healy was appointed to transport the children from North Westford to the William E. Frost School in Westford Center. The next section, section is called School Meeting. The members of the Westford School Board held a meeting in the Sergeant School here Saturday, March 20th, and organized for the year 1909 as follows. Chairman Albert R. Schott, Secretary Walter C. Wright, Agents for textbook, Textbooks and Supplies, uh, Walter C. Wright, Medical Inspector Dr. Cyril A. Blaney, Committee on Music and Textbooks, Charles O. Prescott and Henry Reed, Committee on Transportation, Charles Prescott Chairman, uh, Henry Reed, Arthur Wilson, and Albert Schott. Assignment of Schools, uh, C.O. Charles O. Prescott, 
and William E. Frost schools, A. E. Wilson Parkerville and high schools, H. B. Reed High, William E. Frost and Stony Brook schools, John Sp Spinner Cameron School, Walter C. Wright Nabnasset and Sergeant schools, A. R. Schott Sergeant School. So the people that were assigning children to various schools generally lived near the schools or in the district of the schools that they were assigning for, it looks like. The next section, section is the Forge Village section. And the first thing reported is the death. Mrs. Elizabeth Bennett, wife of Joseph Bennett, died Saturday morning at the age of 70 years. She leaves besides her husband, eight children, five daughters, and three sons. The funeral services were held Tuesday afternoon, Reverend Thomas L. Fisher officiating. Uh, he was the pastor at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Ayer, the sponsoring church for St. Andrew's Mission in uh, Forge Village. And then there's a listing of all of the um, flowers that were given at the funeral and who gave them. The bearers were her three sons, William H., Daniel, and Joseph, and her son-in-law, A.W. Meyer. Burial was at Fairview Cemetery, David Grieg, undertaker. And that's the news in Westford for the week ending March 27th, 1909. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and pad podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for the next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.